Praise the Lord. Got your Bibles? Let's go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it, it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel? And knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? No man ascendeth to the Father, to heaven, but he that cometh down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'll stop there. Title of my message, Born a Christian or Born Again, Which? Born a Christian or Born Again, Which? Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this night. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity to preach your word. I ask you, Father, anoint my lips of clay. Anoint those who hear me, ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to do something different. I've actually got two opening illustrations, but I think it'll work. In the November 12th, I mean, November 9th, 2012 issue of the Sword of the Lord, in a message called By Grace Alone Through Faith Alone by the late Dr. Curtis Hudson, he says, Man is not saved because of what he is. People have said unto me, I have been a Christian ever since I was born. No one is a Christian until he is born again. It's impossible to inherit salvation. I want you to know, he seems like he's had some of the same things I've had troubles with. But, you know, I have had to deal with people like that. I'll never forget when I first got saved. I just call him Tom for the sake of the story. I'm not revealing his name or names or whichever. I met a young guy. He was uh, about three or four years younger than me, maybe a little younger. Good. We were friends for a while, but you know, this young man said, when I told him I was a born again Christian, he said, I'm just a born Christian. You know what's sad? There's no such thing as a born Christian. What he was referring to is the fact that he grew up in a Catholic home and that, you know, he grew up just, you know, in a, you know, in a certain environment. And he felt because he grew up a Catholic, he was just a born Christian. You know, it doesn't matter whether he was Lutheran, Episcopalian, Baptist. It wouldn't matter if he was holiness. A Pentecostal. It wouldn't matter what his faith is. If he grew up in that home, he is not a born Christian if he's never received Jesus Christ as his Savior and Lord. Today, I want to deal with 
Are you a born Christian or are you, a, or are you born again? There is a big difference. The fallacy of a born Christian idea. You know, there's a problem with that. Number one, King David recognized this problem. After he prayed his prayer of repentance, he said, Isaiah, Psalm 51, verse 5, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. He recognized the fact that he was born with that sinful nature, that disposition to sin. Once again, later on, in another psalm, I don't know whether it was written for or after, but it don't matter. He said in Psalm 58, verse 1 through 3, Do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge uprightly, O, sons, o ye sons of men? Yea, in the heart ye work wickedness. Yea, the violence of your hands is in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born. Speak and lies. You know what he learned? He learned that he was born with that disposition to sin. He recognized that when a man is born, they're not born a child of God. They're born a child of the devil. Amen. You know, that's the trouble. That's the next point, believe it or not. Men are not born children of God. They're born children of the devil. Jesus speaking to the religious leaders of his day. He called them children of the devil. John 8, 44 says, You're of your father the devil, and the lust of your father he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speak of a lie, he speak of his own, for he is a liar and a father of it. I have it written here, and I think it's a good illustration. It happened not long after I got saved. I went to a church service at the campus one Sunday night. One I kind of wish I hadn't. I'll leave it there. But later on, I saw a guy. I'll just say his first name, Scott. He asked me, are you a child of God? And I said, yes. You know what he said? He said, I'm a child of the devil. At that time, I felt a little intimidated being a new convert. But you know how I'd feel now? I'd feel like hugging his neck. <laughs> what do you mean, Brother Roy? Let me tell you why. We're in a day and age where there's so, much pe so many people say they're children of God when they're not. It bothers me when they say they are a child of God not. But when somebody boldly says they're a child of the devil... You know, I feel like you've just done step number one towards salvation. When a person says, I'm not worthy to go to church because of how wicked a sinner I really that I am. I say, well, you've done the first step you need to do in order to get saved by acknowledging that you're lost, that you're a wicked sinner. For Jesus came not in the world to call the righteous to repentance, but to call sinners. They that be whole need not a physician, but they that be sick. <clears throat> I'll tell you, I actually like it now. When people start saying they're a wicked man, one of my favorites I heard, this was years ago, once again, not quite as long. It was one of these back in the days when I liked to hug his neck. This man, I'll tell you his name for a reason. Some of the people will know why. The name of the center man was Ralph Cox, not to be confused with the late Pastor Ralph Cox, the one time editor of the Holiness Messenger. But when he told me his name was Ralph Cox, I said, you know, I know a preacher out in Tulsa, Oklahoma named Ralph Cox. He said, I ain't no preacher. He went on and said, I was in the, uh, last time I was in Tulsa when I was in whatever branch of service, I think it was Navy, but it could have been Air Force or whatever. It don't matter. That's when he uh, was out in Tulsa last. Uh, but anyway, this Ralph Cox, you know, he told me, he said, I'm a wicked sinner. Brother, sister, I would like to hug his neck and said, Mr. Cox, you're one step closer to being saved. Amen. People don't know that when they say how wicked they are, when they say they're not worthy of God's love, when they say they're children of the devil, they're done the first step they need to get saved. People don't realize that, but I do. Amen. 
Paul called the false prophet Elmas Bar Jesus a child of the devil. Acts chapter 13, 9 and 10. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, all full of, Oh, full of all subtility and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the righteous ways of the Lord? Mind you, when you see Bar in a name, like Bar, Simon Bar Jonah, Simon Peter, Bar stands son of Jonah. You know what this man was really saying his name was? Bar Jesus. He was saying he was the son of Jesus. I'm telling you something. That's how blasphemous this sorcerer was. Even his name Elymas means sorcerer. He was a false prophet. I'm telling you, there are people now preaching a universal fatherhood of man and of God and brother a universal fatherhood of men. I'm sorry to say Paul actually proved right then and there this this lie from the this a lie from the pits of hell, the universal fatherhood of God and the universal brotherhood of men. It would be closer to the truth if it was the universal fatherhood of the devil and the universal brotherhood of men. I'm sorry to say that. And the Apostle John puts even the difference between the children of God and the children of the devil. Mind you, he was the beloved apostle, the one that wrote a lot about love. Amen. First John chapter 3, verse 10 says, And this are the, chi the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. I'll tell you, he realized that there was a difference between a child of God and a child of the devil. This should be a sufficient proof for anybody who's honest that not all men are children of God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, that's three witnesses, and one of them being none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. That'd be final for me, then the Apostle Paul and the Apostle John, but says this is, the third time I'm coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So guess what? You may have been born in a Christian home. You may have been raised by Christian principles. I'm not even going to get on what group you're with. You might be following a Pentecostal group. You know, you might go through the motions, the devotions, and the commotions <laughs> of the church. And still not be saved. We were born dead spiritually. Paul says in his epistle to the church of Ephesus. Ephesians chapter one, 2 verse 1. Also, and you have he quickened who are also dead in trespasses and sins. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3. Even when we were dead in sins have quickened us together with Christ. For by grace you are saved. I tell you something tonight. You could have been baptized. You could have been sprinkled as an infant. I was. That didn't make me no Christian. In fact, I'm against infant baptism. I believe baptism is for believers only. If I complete immersion in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and I preach, and I would be. I'm, I'm not Anabaptist in the sense of. Being in a group called Anabaptist, but I am Anabaptist in the doctrine that you need to be rebaptized. If you were sprinkled as a child when you get saved later on, you need to be rebaptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost by complete immersion. Amen. Paul in his epistle to the Colossians addressed this. Colossians 3 2 13 says, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses. Jesus recognized this principle. Mark chapter 8, 22 and 23. And another of his disciples said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. He was saying, you need to take care of this business of following me. Let your unsaved brothers and sisters, so to speak, bury their dead. You know, there have been men and women of God who whenever they uh, served God had to pay the 
sacrifice of not being able to see their father buried, Francis Ashbury back in the 1700s. Understand they didn't have cell phones. They didn't have CB radios. <laughs> hey, some of you probably there scratch your head just what I said. A CB radio. They didn't have any form of communication like we do today. More than likely, they had to put it in a letter. And slowly, it went over a ship over the sea. And finally got back to Francis Ashbury. Days later, your father has died. Your mother has died. It's sad to say that they didn't have the communication and many people have given up their lives for the gospel. Or one of the ways they given up their life, so to speak, was they couldn't even get in for their mother or father's funeral. I'll tell you tonight, here are the facts. We were all born children of the devil. We've all been born with that sin nature or principle. We were all born dead. So no one is a born Christian. And how do we become a child of God? Through the new birth as I was dealing with. John chapter 3 verse 3 to 7. Jesus said, unto, answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again tonight. You must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. You must be born again in order to inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus said, Marvel not thy son, you must be born again. You know what he was saying, Jesus? He's saying you were born into this world. You were not born a child of God, but you've got to be born again and become a child of God. That's exactly what he was saying. And mind you, this man Nicodemus was a Pharisee. And a ruler of the Jews. There was a man of the G Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And unlike some of the other Jews, he didn't come trying to destroy Jesus. He actually came because I believe the Lord enlightened his heart. And I believe he was ready to hear what Jesus said. You know, we often said he was fearful or ashamed. I don't know if I believe he was as much ashamed. Fear may be because, you know, there's an unhealthy fear and there's healthy fears. By faith, Noah, being warned, of a, being warned by God of the destruction, he built an ark, move of fears, and built an ark. When he heard that judgment of God was coming, that was a healthy fear. I believe it's a healthy fear sometimes. You know, I believe... A healthy fear could also be called prudence. A prudent man seeth the evil and hideth himself. Proverbs 22, verse 3. I, I believe that I kind of lean he was more, maybe had a prudent fear knowing that the other Pharisees might be watching him. Then there's also the school of thought that he may have been there because most of the scribes were out studying late at night. It don't really matter. He came to Jesus by night. And Jesus said to this man, I believe he was a Pharisee from birth. He needed to be born again. Marvel not thy sanity. You must be born again. It's not religion that gets one saved, but the new birth. Nicodemus was religious, but he was very lost. Saul of Tarsus was a religious but lost man. Philippians chapter 3, 4-7. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man thinketh that he hath, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, pardon me, Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, ah, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But that which I, things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. That's why, Nick, why Paul had to be knocked down. He was so devout in his false, in his uh, religion. 
the Lord had to deal with him harshly in order to get him saved. Amen. And what did he say? And then he happened in Acts 9. What did he say? Titus 3, 5. Now works of righteousness which we have done, but that according to his mercy have saved us by the washing of regeneration, by the renewing of the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you what, tonight we have to become children of God by faith. Amen. The Bible says, John 1, 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power, become the sons of God, even as many as believed on his name. We were in darkness. Now we're in the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians 1, 13, who delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. We are delivered from the power of Satan unto God. Acts chapter 26, verse 18 says, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan and the God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith as in me. Amen. We were called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We were we are adopted, John eight Romans chapter eight, verse fifteen, pardon me. For ye have received not for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you received the Spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You know, I remember hearing a, a story of a young man years ago. I'd say he was late 20s, early 30s. He's long been dead, and I hope he made it because I just wonder how he was later on in his life. I'll leave it there. I really don't know. But he told me of a very beautiful experience. And mind you, this man was a very troubled young man. He told this beautiful experience. He said one day or night, I don't know which it was. I believe the Spirit of God came into the room he was at. And he was there saying, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. That was a beautiful experience just even thinking about now. Young man troubled. Saying, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. We need to have that same experience. May not come like a supernatural experience, but we should be able to say, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Whew, I'm feeling something now. Abba, Father. Abba, Father. He's my heavenly Father. Abba, Father. As Brother Savage says, I'm feeling better now. Amen. Jesus provided salvation on Calvary. Isaiah 53, 5 and 6, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. A chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. Jesus died for us when we were in sin. The Bible says, but God committed his love towards us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It was through his blood that we become children of God. Romans 5, 9, the next verse says, Much more been, being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Jesus now he died, but he rose again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 3 and 4. For I have delivered unto you first of all, which I have also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, and how that he was buried and then he rose again the third day according to scriptures. The, Romans 10, 19, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised from the dead, 
Thou shalt be saved for with a heart man belief unto righteousness. With a mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's the gospel message. Amen. What must we do to be saved? First off, you've got to acknowledge your need of Savior. As I said earlier, you got to recognize that you're a sinner. The Bible says, for all have sinned and have come sure of the glory of God. Romans 3, 9 through 24 is our every man's biography. As the late Dr. Robert L. Sumner said, 9 through 23, I should say, tonight, you must acknowledge your need to be saved at Jesus. What else? You must believe that Jesus is the only way. John 3, 16 says, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believe him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 14, verse 6 says, Jesus answered and said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts 4, 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. What's the name? The name of Jesus. That Jesus both died and rose again, you must believe. For thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved for with a, man, with a heart man belief unto righteousness. With a ha mouth confession is made unto salvation. Quote again. I'll tell you something. You must believe that Jesus is the only way. You must believe that Jesus died and rose again. And then you need to repent of your sin. The Bible says. Except you repent. You shall all likewise perish. Acts 1730 says, In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now command all men everywhere to repent. Acts 1730. Acts 20, 21, testify both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Was repentance at first second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12 says, For godly sorrow work of repentance, the salvation not to be repented of. God, but sorrow of the world. Work of death. You know what godly sorrow really is? You're sorry because of your sin. You know what sorrow of the world is? You're sorry because you got caught. So let that thing sink. Let that sink in your head. Are you sorry because of the sin you commit to where you're ready to give it up? Or are you sorry because you got caught? Tonight, that is a very important question. Repentance is a command, not an option. Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. That's part of repentance. And the unrighteous man is thought to let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, he will abundantly pardon. You must repent. Or more, you must receive Jesus. The Bible says, John chapter 1, verse 12. I've quoted it earlier, I'll quote it again. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Revelation 3 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing, this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No <clears throat> other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus.